And today we are at a very interesting place in New Delhi. <laughs> The reason why I you know, got in touch with uh, Russell was, was basically it's my first time in India and um, coming from Australia you, you read about uh, India being a hotbed of startups uh, and, and tech and innovation but the thing is in Australia all I read about uh, and certainly all the popular press talks about uh, some of the high profile startups, you know, like Flipkart or or your rooms, and that's all they're talking about. But you know, obviously, working in a co-working space back in Perth, I know there's more. And I was hoping that in the time that I was here, I'd get a chance to, to meet uh, some of the new rising stars and startups and freelancers and stuff. Uh, and then obviously, co-working space is the, just the obvious place to sort of come. Visit. So I guess we're coming here and reaching out to, to the Brussels to, to actually do this work. I end up doing the presentation instead. So hopefully, after this finishes, I can flip the, uh, the, the to the other side of the point and actually you know, have you guys do a QA about your work, the projects you guys work on. So, um, so my role isn't actually to educate or inform. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I'm more than happy to share with you what, what I've learned, uh, the mistakes that I've made. And so, in the project, in the hope that you know, it, it actually helps. If, you know, if at all, on your projects uh, and your startups. So, I'm John. I'm a 46-year-old Australian. I know I don't look Australian, but I, I'm, I'm actually Australian. You don't look 46 either. No. Same question as like. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> um, I was born in Singapore, and uh, my family migrated to Perth when I was young. I grew up, studied there, and, uh, and, and worked there and stuff. And so, uh, I'm based in Perth. I have a young family. Uh, and um, uh, three years ago, I, I launched, uh, I, I bootstrapped stockphoto.com. Um, I won't bore you too much with the details, it might be interesting. Just to give you an idea, just to over where stockphoto is right now. So three years old, we launched uh, in September 2013, uh, so it's almost three years old. Um, we have 47 million uh, stock images and vectors for sale. I assume that everyone knows what stock photos are? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, 46 million, uh, 47 million, sorry. Uh, we sourced that through two avenues. We have 25 direct relationships with uh, individual uh, photographers. These are professional, most of the professional uh, stock photographers that, that also have the images for sale on other platforms like, you know, Archipedia, Shutterstock, Highstock Photo, Photolia, Dreamstone. And so they do very well out of it. So, uh, and we also use one wholesale provider uh, because the 25 photographers only provide about a million. So the, the, the wholesale photography, uh, sorry, the wholesale agency provides the remaining 46 million just to, you know, because the, the range of searches it's quite diverse. One million just doesn't cut it. We found. Uh, our mailing list is about 12,000. Uh, I'm now full time after sort of two years of being a part time co-founder. So work during the day, you know, contract, go home, feed the kids, bath, put them to bed, you know, spend some time with the wife, get on the computer. And then fall asleep. Uh, so now I'm full time. I brought on two co founders as well, uh, which I'll talk about a bit later. I have one advisory board member because I heard that you're supposed to have an advisory board just so you're not making the only decisions and you're not seeing it in my perspective. So uh, I've known Nick Ken, uh, Nick Ken uh, from when I bought the domain name. He was the GM at Flipper, the marketplace that I bought the domain, domain name at. So he's quite familiar with marketplaces and e commerce. And, and digital marketing, conversion rates and stuff. So I have them bought. Uh, we make a small monthly profit and we're cash flow positive. Uh, enough to, I guess, pay, a, pay the stipend and service my very unglamorous lifestyle. So, so we hope to grow, I hope to grow that. Uh, so how did I get here? So uh, I'm actually a CPA by trade, um, unfortunately, sorry. Um, I was doing some banking in a previous life. Uh, fell into the system side of things, I'm a systems analyst. The contracting that I spoke about was for uh, BHP, uh, Australia, the uh, world's largest uh, mining company. Uh, they run iron ore 
mining process of operations in Western Australia where I'm based and uh, basically work on their rail systems logistics team. Um, uh, as you do when you work, you know, uh, you sort of get bored after your second decade at your job and you sort of start fiddling and looking for side projects and that's how I got started. Um, I fell into the online space, I, you know, my, my period, my, you know, when the penny dropped for me was in the pre-dot-com boom days, so in the late 90s. So the first dot com boot, uh, you youngsters. Uh, and so, you know, you dabble, you know, open source had just become a thing. Uh, hosting, cheap hosting had just become a thing. Cloud was still quite a while away and freelancing, you know, didn't exist back then. Um, you know, uh, web development platforms were very poor. Uh, but, you know, with open source, you can pretty much, within three clicks, have something up and running. Pretty much like WordPress nowadays, just a little bit more expensive. And so I, I launched a, a, a forum to start with. You know, uh, my learnings, I eventually sold it uh, two years later to a Chicago-based IT sort of consultancy. Um, but the lesson I learned from that was that I think even back then, setting up a website uh, is quite easy. You know, even easier now. But uh, the hard thing is actually traffic, isn't it? Because to, to have traction, means you actually have to go and get a visitor and hopefully convert them to either being a, a customer or a subscriber of your content. And so I think that that penny dropped for me uh, and that was my greatest learning out of that. And so I felt even back then that I, I had one web startup in me that I wanted to do uh, before I died. And so when I turned 40, uh, I, I sort of really sat down and thought, well, you know, time's running out. Uh, I'm not going to get a chance after this, be too old, maybe won't care or have the, uh, have, the, have the stomach to fight. And so I sat there and I was like, let's define exactly what sort of business we're looking at here to, to start to, to set up. But the main driver is, uh, you know, I've got a young family, things work for us, you know, I've got a very happy life at home. Uh, you know, uh, this, this startup thing is really a, a personal uh, choice. I, I think it's a personal Everest, you know, it's a personal channel sweep. So whilst the, uh, I think the finances and the money or profit or expected capital gains uh, is, is a bit of a scoreboard thing, you know, after a certain point, it's just a show, isn't it? So uh, it, this is more of a personal thing. So it had to be a lifestyle business. It sort of be, had to be something that I could run uh, pretty much by myself, if not part-time, you know, when I was working, uh, which meant that it had to be a digital product. So I would have to deal with logistics, uh, storage, warehousing, production, you know, aftercare support, that sort of stuff. Because it just wouldn't be possible, you know, on half of it or one quarter of an FTE, half of it, a quarter of a person. But I wanted, I was sure that I wanted it to be in a growth market. No point being in a mature industry, you know, seen on a cash cow. No point. But, you know, I, I wanted to experience the uh, the riddle of growth, you know, that you see uh, nowadays. Uh, on, on the web. And so nothing much happened after I wrote these things down, I do these requirements down, until one day um, uh, a friend of mine called up and said, Wait, there's, a, there's an auction listing on Flipper. Uh, Flipper's a marketplace for domains and websites. Uh, and he said, um, it's a pretty good name, you should go have a look at it. I said, oh, what is it? It was at stockphoto.com. Uh, I said, oh, that is a good domain name. Because the, you know, like the, the main players are Shutterstock and iStockphoto. Think, well, this is a generic name. It's like you know, diabetestreatment.com uh, or blogging.com. You know, uh, very specific. And uh, I said, "Oh, fantastic!" But how much are they asking for? I said, "250,000 US." Yeah. So I didn't think about it for a couple of days, but I did come back to it. And I thought, actually, uh, it fits the bill at first glance. You know, now how do I justify the finances? If I were to take this, and so um, uh, my justification was: Do you guys know about CPC? Obviously, net pay traffic. Uh, not only as a user, but also as a freelancer service. So you're always competing for traffic, right? And so um, I figured that a whole bunch of people would forget to type the I. So instead of being asked off further, they were actually come to me. So that's the, that was the hypothesis. So um, you know, going back to the original 
uh, learning from what I was the, uh, the forum. But traffic, traffic is king. The most valuable commodity <coughs> on the internet is, is traffic, is a visitor. Because without, without traffic, you, ha you have no chance of even gaining traction in whatever it is. actually tapping in your so, uh, so my hypothesis was that I'd actually get a, a lot of traffic from people who should know better, but don't, and just type it in. Uh, looking for shadow, uh, looking for uh, iStock photo, but coming to me instead. Um, so the CPC for the, the search term stock, stock photo and stock photos, they're about twenty dollars a click. Yeah, so actually on the higher side. And so I let the financial, you know, adept people in the, the room figure out how you sort of work backwards to, to you know, work out your ROI. But my guess was, you know, my goal wasn't to. to Build a unicorn, which seems to be the, the going sort of thing. I was happy to make a, a, a return that was decent, so something closer to what you know, perhaps real estate as an alternative, as a substitute. That'd be about benchmark. And so I, I had quite realistic expectations or, or hurdle rates. And so, um, uh, and also the, the thinking was because you knew that, well, your hypothesis that, that traffic is the most valuable thing on the internet, and you can't actually, you know, do anything until you had traffic. Was that? Um, uh, Thanks for the questions. Uh, why would you spend your money? And, and, sorry, and getting traffic was the highest risk of your transaction cycle. Yeah. Why would you spend your money at the back end, creating a platform, you know, making it scalable, using the latest JavaScript library, etc., trying to find your rockstar, you know, your CTO, when you should actually be spending your your, your equity. On the, the wobbliest bit of the transaction cycle because you don't know who your customers are. Customer preferences change depending on where you are, who you are, what you're selling. And it's also a function of what substitutes the alternatives they can buy. So the competitors come into play. Uh, and so for pricing, you know, positioning, branding, all that sort of stuff, all these potential breakpoints are actually in the marketing function. And these change over time as well. So even if you solve that problem for one little, you know, people that, that do affiliate marketing or pay traffic and then try and arbitrage it, you know, that sort of stuff only works for a certain time. It's, it's called arbitrage for a reason, because that stuff doesn't last forever. And so why, the, the rationale is why would you spend all that money trying to address platform and delivery when actually the hardest part is the first bit? Yeah? So I went ahead, I went ahead and bought it. Uh, I had set aside some personal savings. Uh, Rejigged it a bit to, to fit uh, and it took the plunge. It's a lot larger than I expected to, to spend, but I was thinking um, you can't actually even buy a Subway franchise for 250 or a KFC franchise. So, um, uh, you know, and, and plus, it's it's in your sphere of knowledge. You should be able to get something out, you know, knowing what you know. You know, I wasn't going to go learn retail food, you know, how to cook a chicken. So, uh, I thought 250, you know, it's unusual. I granted, not a whole lot of people would spend 250, even 50,000 on a domain. It's crazy. But 250, but, I, you, know, you know, does it make sense? I mean, like, would you allocate your scarce resources to addressing, you know, the, the toughest, most complex, but perhaps the most important part of your transaction cycle? Would you? Or do you think, oh, you spend it on the back end? Tough problem. Okay? Yeah, tough tough problem. Problem. Depends. Half and half. Set bed sitters, you guys. So, okay. So that's uh, so I bought the I went out and I'll, I'll cut the long story short. I bought the domain name by now. I didn't worry about you know negotiating or low balling or whatever. And so the problem was I only had a budget of two fifty. I only spent it on the domain name. So my little problem was okay. I got this traffic, but uh, how how was I going to make something out of nothing? And so um, what I did was I spent 250 on a on the domain, 250k on the domain name. Uh, I cobbled together 300 dollars to buy a clone script, an e-commerce shop clone script for a photographer, which you know basically just you know, displays your images in the gallery, have a checkout, you know, have your cart, checkout, and PayPal functionality. And uh, I think it had you know basic backend stuff, you know, member name, you know, all your CRUD operation, you know, I'll change it, I'll create, I'll delete it, all that sort of stuff. So 300 bucks, actually it wasn't even 300 bucks, I had a promo code. I paid $250 for 
So, yeah, what's it, 0.1%? Yeah, vitamin main name, yeah, hack it. And uh, it was a PHP script, worked on a lamp, lamp stack, thinking was that, hey, open source is cheaper, which meant hosting was cheaper. From the learnings from the previous project. And because it's open source and it's PHP, and basically on PHP, lots of freelancers. So there wasn't a, by the way, there's only five Meteor.js developers that I could hire at one time, and it happened to be it's, you know, San Francisco, you know. And so lots of PHP, so liquidity, you know, uh, accessibility, they're all really freelancing platforms, I could manage them without you know, a low cost. Uh, went with the e-commerce business model as opposed to a two-sided marketplace, which meant uh, it allowed me to control the back-end process. One thing, it's one thing to build the platform, but once you build it, you'd, you'd hate, you know, even if you could do it on the cheap, you'd hate to have a platform that actually costs you money or requires you to have a team to support it, and have, you know, someone to have many processes sorted out, like customer support or, you know, um, refund requests or chargebacks, that sort of stuff. So. So what I did was, with photography, um, when photographers came in and uploaded all the FTP and all the images up there, you still had to curate them. You can't sort of, well, you can take the, take the whole lot. But the thing is, most photographers love everything that they shot. So they'll send you terabytes and terabytes of data. So you really have to filter, cut that down. And I figured I couldn't afford that. So I, I said, look, I'm just going to be an invite-only market, you know, marketplace. So effectively, only any so I picked my photographers, they tend to be professionals, uh, with a demonstrated sales history at other agencies yeah, to, to de-risk the process. Um, and I would eliminate any manual processes that really didn't lead to a sale or cost me money in supporting. So if someone said, that wasn't the right photo, or that wasn't the right size, I say, I don't say, oh, wow, can I get you the right one? I say, here's your refund, I apologize. And here's a 10% off promo code. Okay? So, no dramas, no questions asked. It cost me 30 seconds. I could do that as a part time contractor. Okay? And everything else, I was going to outsource. What did I do first? So, the, the name service resolved uh, pretty much after New Year's when it settled. Uh, first thing, put a MailChimp landing page, just a stock standard landing page, asking for an uh, email, double opt in. Uh, First thing you should do is always be working at this right. Uh, and I asked them, hey, give me your email address, please, but what, what sort of visitor are you? Are you a customer, a photographer, or uh, just you know, out of interest? Anyway, we collected uh, just over 10,000 subscribers in six months. So in that six months, I was waiting for, for my development to finish. So uh, yeah, six months. So and put Google Analytics on, and that helped me verify not only the, the traffic, but also the, sign, the quality of the traffic, so the sign-ups verify the quality. So the good thing was the actual traffic was higher than my estimated traffic, which obviously drove my financial model. Okay. And then I just kicked off this is clients. In fact, I think I wasted some money after I, I bought the domain name because uh, I had the script in place and all I really needed was a reskin, you know, someone who just changed the CSS, you know, wasn't looking for a brand you know, UX award. It was just maybe one hero image and a one search box, but I had all these grandiose plans. I, I, I fell in love with UX or UI, and, and I blew 15,000 on a web development, local web development. And they did a great job, but if you had to spend money, it might as well be something that you actually got you sales. So I really could have launched earlier and for cheaper, 15,000 dollars less. But anyway, lessons you learn. So what I didn't do was I didn't raise funding. I haven't raised funding. I'm still bootstrapping it. Uh, I didn't do a business plan. I had a fin model, not a business plan. Didn't know how to project a business selling a product I didn't understand or start with. I wasn't a photographer, I wasn't an intern marketer, so I'd be a fraud doing a business plan of projections. You know, I was going to just learn and see and go. I didn't, I didn't spend time designing a logo because I figured who, hell's, who the hell would care? I didn't uh, rent premises, even though if I did, I'd work out of here. And I didn't try and find a technical co-founder. Uh, I didn't pay traffic, I didn't hang out at local co-working space, I never networked, I didn't do meetups, uh, I didn't you know, talk about designing an app, I didn't work with the latest bad JS library, uh, and I didn't architect my back end uh, for scalability. Um, the script I had, it was just a, you know, I don't know who wrote it, I think it was an American 
that, you know, it's not standard, nothing sexy, designed to work on a dedicated server. Uh, you know, uh, didn't have to work with AWS from day one. Okay? And what I did do, most of all, didn't wait till everything was perfect. Okay, so launched September, so nine months after I bought it, with C content of 57,000 images uh, from one photographer that I was introduced to. Um, so, still working full time as a founder, and I launched at about 10.30 that morning after my second and third coffee for the day, and uh, hit, the, hit the go live button, uh, and the first sale happened the next day for $50, the best $50 I ever made, I cried. I'll share with you more, more star, and I'll start wrapping up. You know, the more star is, Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know everyone in the startup space. You know, I'm sure the work, the work that you guys do, they're disruptive. You're trying to uh, fix a, an economic problem, a delivery problem, a fulfillment problem. Uh, I wasn't. You know, uh, the stock photo industry is not broken. It's a very efficient industry. You know, uh, yes, there's pricing differences. There might be some sort of challenges in terms of licensing, but it, it, there was nothing disruptive that I needed to be. So 